Hey, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome everybody out to Harmony this morning. Um, just to let you know, we're going to go ahead and start the service in about four minutes, three minutes, four minutes. We're just giving uh, the online viewers a chance to sign on. So thanks for your patience. And we'll be started in a minute. Good morning once again. Uh, welcome to Harmony this morning to our Memorial Day service in honor and in memory of those who have served. We'd like to uh, welcome each one that's come out again this morning and those that are watching us online. stars to be living here today because the flag still stands for freedom we can't take that away and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me and I gladly say Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shiny sea. 
From Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A. Who's bright in every American's heart and it's time to stand and say That I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today Page 29 in the Great Gospel Songs and Hymns, page 29. Pastor Tony, do you want to come up first? Good morning. I want to thank you all for being here. For those watching live today, we got a few announcements this morning. I want to get those out to you. And just uh, first off, Memorial Day, we celebrate it for those that's laid down their lives, those that have fallen, give the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. So we want to certainly extend the thanks to those that have done that and their families that have gave that sacrifice of their loved one. Um, upcoming events here at Harmony Baptist Church, May the 31st, next Sunday, will be our senior recognition, our graduation recognition for those that are graduating either uh, high school, college, or any other uh, further education, so we'll uh, recognize those next Sunday here, the 31st, with the slideshow and Bible presentation and those things. Uh, June the 15th through the 19th is a vacation Bible school, and we've got some more ideas and some uh, more information coming on that soon, uh, waiting on the deacons to meet, and so we'll have some more information on that hopefully next week for uh, vacation Bible school. In July the 25th, will be uh, Saturday night, will be the beginning of Revival, and that'll run Saturday through Wednesday. And September the 18th through the 20th are tentative days for church camp. And uh, we want to extend a, a thanks to those that put the flags out today. We're assuming it was Wayne, Mike, and Ted. They always do that. And uh, if anybody else was involved in that, thank you as well. They look wonderful this morning when we came in. We uh, have Sunday school every Sunday at 10, worship service at 11. And uh, live stream on Facebook will be at 11 as we're going to continue to do that as we get back to normal. Uh, however, this time is uncertain and, and everybody's asking, well, are y'all started back to church? We are back every Sunday, 10 to 11. So we are with Sunday school and worship service, 10 to 11. So we thank you for that. Prayer requests this week. Uh, of course, we have the end of the coronavirus, the loss, the military, our youth, shut-ins, Shirley Weaver. David McCord, Milo Wallace, Billy Joe Muckus, Betty Roden, Jess Davis, David Hart, Tammy Cox, the leaders of our country, and the family of Clint Waters. Um, just to update on a couple of those, Miss Shirley had a hip replacement this last week. She is home, and uh, she's doing a lot better. She's still got some pain and some discomfort, but keep remembering her and Allison as she takes care of her and Sonia. Uh, spoke to David Hart this morning. He got to come home same day. Knee surgery went great. Uh, David is actually ahead. He's just uh, put the walker to the side. He's walking with a cane, but he's just got the cane in case he falls. He's moving around, very little pain. David's he was going to try to come to church today, but just didn't want to push it. So thank God for David uh, having a great knee replacement. And Mylon is at home, and from what I understand, expecting a grandbaby soon. We've seen the gender reveal baby girl, correct? We've seen that gender reveal, so keep praying for Mylon. Is there any other prayer request or any other announcements that need to be made. 
Again, we do not pass the collection plate during this time. There's a box in the foyer uh, coming or going. You can drop it in there. and They'll take that up and, and get it taken care of. So we thank you for that. If we could all stand this morning, we'd go to the Lord in prayer. Again, I want to thank you for taking the effort to come out this morning. It means a lot. Uh, those that are at home watching, we want you to know uh, we're doing everything we can possibly to make it as a safe environment here at church, and we are missing you. Uh, we look forward, now that the president has made us essential, that we can all get back to uh, as normal as possible. Um, I, I don't think a lot of us were ever normal, but we're going to try our best to act normal. Uh, but we're, we're looking forward to the church house being full again and people being here and moving on with our activities as a, a, a place of worship and a place that God has set aside for us to gather here and, and enjoy and worship his word. I want to ask Stan Worley if he'll lead us in a word of prayer this morning. Brother Stan. Page 29, 29.
Just want to start by saying, oh, I'm on now, um, that me and Steph have missed everybody, missed talking to everybody, um, love all you guys that are here and not here, um, and I know everybody's been wanting to hear me sing, and I hate singing on camera, I hate hearing myself sing on camera, so I was not going to until I came, and here we are, so here you go. <laughs> I've been through some testing and trials that felt like a detour that went on for miles. But standing here now looking back, I can say, Lord, I'm thankful. 
Some storms I thought I would never survive But here I am feeling so strong and alive The darkness is past and the morning is bright And I'm thankful Lord, I'm thankful like David after Goliath like Paul and Silas after the jail I'm thankful like Daniel after the lions Lord I'm thankful thankful like Noah back on dry ground thankful like Lazarus finally unwound every beat of my heart wants to pound I'm thankful Lord I'm thankful I've battled giants of failure and fear with shadows of doubt where my hope wasn't clear but all along Lord you were hovering near and I'm thankful all the sins of my past were a thundering war that echoed the guilt that I could not ignore but it's nailed to the cross and I hear it no more and I'm thankful Lord, I'm thankful like David after Goliath, like Paul and Silas after the jail. I'm thankful like Daniel after the lions. Lord, I'm thankful, thankful like Noah back on dry ground, thankful like Lazarus finally unwound. Every beat of my heart wants to pound. I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful like David after Goliath, like Paul and Silas after the jail. I'm thankful like Daniel after the lions. Lord, I'm thankful. Thankful like Noah back on dry ground. Thankful like Lazarus finally unwound. Every beat of my heart wants to pound. I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, I'm thankful. Thank you. If I could sing like that, I'd sing in front of any camera. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Great having y'all back with us. Don't want to embarrass you, Stephanie, but could you stand up for a moment? <laughs> I didn't say turn sideways, Josh. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful this morning? Amen. Uh, if we can't get people to come and visit us at church, we'll just have our own. <laughs> so we're excited growing the church through new babies uh, I'll tell you what that gives me it gives me hope that uh, God's not finished yet he's still letting mothers and fathers letting uh, men and women become mothers and fathers and letting babies come into this world so there's still a hope and there's still time there's still effort got you Bibles want to follow along with us today John book of St. John chapter 9 uh, I don't want to overuse this term but we're going to kind of piggyback off of last week's follow the Lord um, God moved on us Sunday afternoon at a wedding we went to and was able to officiate for Jeffrey and Hannah and uh, there was a young man there who uh, had a vision problem and he held his mother's hand and I was a nervous wreck watching that young man walk around the poolside and watching that young man go up and down steps and uh, he held his mother's arm and through his ears of listening where she was, he just followed her everywhere and he never stumbled, he never faltered. And the Lord spoke to us and uh, basically let me know that I wasn't done with follow the Lord. Uh, he said if we would all get a hold of him just like that and let him lead us, uh, we would be in a whole different state than where we are right now. But uh, we've got a few... Uh, Words we want to share with you, read some scripture this morning. Don't know that we'll be very, very long. Don't know that we'll be very short, but we're going to uh, just do what God has asked us to do. 
again, I want to thank you to everybody that's put the effort in uh, this week. There's been a lot of things done. Uh, uh, Gabe and Kip and Tina and the girls and everybody that's took part. And uh, Steve's been up here several nights working and uh, trying to get this the very best it can be. Uh, but I tell you, until everybody's back in God's house, it just won't be complete. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, Book of St. John, chapter 9, we're going to start in the very, very first verse, very familiar scripture, uh, Jesus healing the blind man here, and uh, we want to try to break this down the way the Lord and give it to us this week, and uh, I don't want to say it seemed simple this week, uh, but it certainly wasn't the hardest message that I've ever tried to uh, sort out how God give it to us, and, and there was a message in that in itself, if you'll just let me lead, they'll all be simple. And uh, the Lord you know, sometimes has to crack our mind back and make us realize how, um, I don't want to say ignorant, but when it comes to God's word, sometimes I don't feel as, as qualified as I should. Uh, but the Lord gives us what we need. And this week he done just that. Starting in the first verse of chapter 9, it says this, And Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his ver birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, uh, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man uh, sinned, nor his parents, but the works, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. The neighbors therefore uh, and they which had before had seen him that he was blind said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. And that's all the reading we're going to do today. But I want to talk to you just for a moment about these scriptures and what God spoke to us this week as we uh, uh, started to unravel this scripture and started uh, uh, to really uh, try to get into what God is seeing and what God is trying to portray here. And, and one thing that, that I thought about uh, this week was there was a time and there, there was a time, and that gets down in the bottom to where they start, uh, and we're going to try to work through this backwards a little bit, and then we'll go to the front. But there was a time to where this man sat and begged. There was a time to where the whole community knew who he was. He was the blind man that sat and begged. He was the blind man that uh, uh, had never been able to see the light of day. He, he was the man that uh, uh, either he or his parents had seen. They knew who he was. But then there came a time to where he met a man named Jesus and all that changed. And uh, we talked a little bit this week with a couple of people and it uh, kept coming up as all the stories in the Bible uh, uh, were uh, pinned down at the moment or uh, was it kind of like a a session to where these men got together and they said, well, you remember the time that Jesus uh, 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 told the parable about leaving the 90 and 9 and going after the one lost sheep? Or do you remember the time that Jesus calmed the storm? Do you remember the time that, uh, as we preached last week, that Jesus walked on water? Do you remember the time that Jesus fed the 5,000. Do you remember the time that Moses uh, uh, saw the burning bush? Do you remember the time that the waters parted? Do you remember the time uh, that Jesus ascended back to the Father? All these stories in the Bible uh, uh, were uh, recollections of what really happened. And at some point in time, there's going to be that same recollection in your life that you're going to say, I remember a time when Jesus really changed my life. 
I know that we're wanting to see a lot of great things. I know that we're so ready for the light to switch and tomorrow to be the uh, same as it was uh, in early March. And we don't have to worry about uh, washing our hands everywhere we go. We don't have to worry about wearing masks everywhere we go. We don't have to worry about uh, who we come in contact with and who's had and who hasn't had and who's been around this and who's been around that one. I know we want to switch this, but brethren, I want to assure you that there's going to come a time when we say, you remember the time that we went through this trial and we came out on the other side even stronger than we were when we went in. Do you remember the time? Now I'm going to try to get back to the scripture here and what God's given to us and Jesus, he's walking along here. Jesus is passing by and he's seeing a blind man and the disciples are looking and, and, and I want you to think about this just for a moment. Jesus sees this man as himself. He didn't uh, look and see a mother or a father or a family. Jesus seen this man alone and he's seen him sitting there and he's seen a blind man. It says that and saw a man blind which was blind from his birth and uh, you know that's that that first verse there kind of caught me that it said that Jesus knew that. Uh, I believe he knew because why? He was before us and he knew this man had been blind and uh, the, the disciples began to ask and they said, well, surely it's got to be because of sin. Someone has sinned and this man was made blind because of sin and uh, Jesus answered quickly and he said, no, it's uh, so that the, the power of God may be known, it may be made manifest, it may be seen, it's uh, this man was placed in this journey uh, all the way from birth to this moment here just so Jesus could pass by. And I said all that to say this, don't ever think it's too late. If you, if you think that I, I've still got something in my life, I'm still waiting for that great moment. I'm still waiting for that right time. Just sit and wait because Jesus will pass by and he will uh, notice you and recognize you and he will change you uh, through that of the power of the Holy Spirit but uh, God uh, uh, let Jesus come to this place and let him pass by and, and the works of God were fixing to be made manifest and Jesus went on to talk about something very important there in the fourth verse he said I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can work what does that what does that mean? The day, uh, uh, the night cometh when no man can work. I've got to work the works that God has sent me while it was day. In other words, today, the day that I see this man, the day that I've come in front of him, and the day that he can hear me and recognize me and uh, through voice or whatever it may have been, but it's daytime. There's coming a night time to where no man can work. How many of you have ever went out in the dark and tried to do anything to, to either go out to your car and get something or, or go out to uh, just the outside of the yard to, to check on things and, and you can't see. You can't, uh, uh, basically you can't see in front of your face, but if you'll sit there for a moment, your eyes will adjust and you can kind of start to see shapes and figures, but you can't work in the dark. You can't work in the dark. This, this last week, we were trying to explain something uh, uh, to Gabe, and, and, and we were talking, and, and I was trying to tell Gabe, and he was looking away from me, and I was talking with my hands. How many of us do that? <laughs> Talk with our hands. But I was talking with my hands, and I thought I was giving the best instructions I could give to Gabe. And, and I was standing behind him, and he was focused on what he was working on. And I was like, no, no, Gabe, you're doing it wrong. He said, I'm doing just what you said. But the problem was, uh, the way I was standing and the way he was standing, his, his right and my right wouldn't line it up the same. And so we, we had to get on the same page. We had to get in line. And, and luckily, a, after it slowed us down about an hour, we figured it out, didn't we, Gabe? We figured it out. Once we got on the same page, we figured it out. Once I got to where he could see me and I could see him, we was able to figure it out. And, and that's when we escaped the night. That's when we escaped the darkness. And so we, we go on just for a minute here, and he, he, he uh, reads on to him there in the fifth, and it says, as long as I am, the wor I am in the world, I am the light of the world. We know without a shadow of a doubt that in the book of Acts in the second chapter, and uh, we read on and we find, we knew uh, that it was coming, but we read to where Jesus ascended back to the Father. 
But, but he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And you say, well, he ascended back to the Father. So, so, so does that mean he's left the world? Well, he, done, he left us something. He said, I'm going to go away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. And we know uh, through our study, and then I hope you know through your faith, that the three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I, I hope you all know that. So he's still here in the world. So as long as we hold to that Spirit, he is still the light of this world. Even in the darkest of times, he is still our light. And when he had done this thing, uh, he, he, he began to tell them, he said, guys, listen. This, this guy, by saying that statement, there, he said, this guy don't need to see daylight. He just needs to hear my voice and feel my spirit, and he will see on the inside. How many of you here today would think I was completely crazy if I told you a blind man can see better than you can? Amen? Why is that? Because they have to be more aware of their surroundings than you do. You think you've got it made, you can run around the track and you can avoid the obstacles. You can uh, go through the grocery store and you can uh, uh, find what you need and get out. And you don't, you, but guess what? How many of us miss so many things every day because we've not slowed down and paid attention to our surroundings? When a blind person, a blind man or woman walks through, they hear every voice because they're setting their self, you, you know, uh, I, I'm going to share this with you. Yesterday, we stopped at the Publix on 306 with big red and green arrows on the floor, and there were still people going the wrong way. How many of y'all have encountered that? I was one of them. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I was one of them until, you know, they started looking at me funny, and I'm like, well, I'm the only one going this way. They're all going that way. I must be in the wrong. But I, I didn't pay attention. I was on a mission. I was on a, in a hurry. But what I want to ask you about in life, are you in such a hurry to get to the end point for you? Are you in such a hurry to get to the reward for you that you're missing everything along the way? But see, a blind person hears a voice and they have to set a distance to that voice that I'm fixing to run into this person. I'm five foot away. I'm four foot away. They're getting closer. I can hear them talking. A blind person can even pick up, and, and I've done a little studying this morning. One of the things they, they teach blind people is listening for movement. Now, how crazy is that? But we all make noise when we move, don't we? The older I get, the more noise I make when I move. Crack, pop, there you go, yeah. A blind person come around me, they think they're fixing to encounter a bowl of Rice Krispies. But they, they teach them to listen for movement. Not to, to try to hear uh, the, what's going on, but just to hear the movement. And so Jesus was telling them, I'm the light of the world, and as long as I'm in the world, I will be the light of the world. And when he had spoken this, he took the spittle, he spit on the ground, and he took the clay, and he made a spittle, and he put it on him. Now I want you to, uh, John, if you'll go to the next one, and we try to go through this just for a minute. The disciples are sitting there thinking, what is Jesus about to do? We've just we've we've walked with him. We know he has no medicines. We know he has no uh, 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 doctor's tools with him. But Jesus is fixing to do something. He takes the dust of the earth, which if you'll read back and you'll find in the very very beginning, we all came from that very dust. Amen. Amen. We all came from there when he breathed life into the nostrils and the, the spirit the, uh, uh, gave the body a living soul. I want you to understand this today, whether you whether you believe it or not. You can say, well, uh, Brother Floyd is here with us today, and Bro Brother Floyd is here in body, and we can see Brother Floyd. I hope and pray, Floyd, we've got 20 or 30 more years together. But I can promise you this, after Brother Floyd leaves, there's still going to be a spirit around this church that we'll be able to feel and we'll be able to see that we'll know he's still with us. Why? Because of the soul today. And that's the same for everyone that's of the very founders of this church today. I can feel them. Can you? There's a reason, there's a purpose that he gave that soul and so it can be felt. And so it can be felt. It's just, we're all blind when it comes to the soul. But he goes on there and he takes the spittle, he makes the spittle and he, he gets in front of him. This is an important part that we've got to realize 
Jesus don't need uh, material things to get your attention. You just need to stop and let him get in front of you with a little bit of dirt. You just need to stop and let him get in front of you. Now, I, I want you to notice this today. We uh, have done this many times, and I, I think I've seen it done at church camps and other things to where they'll blindfold you, and then they'll get you to eat certain things. Have y'all ever done that cruel trick to anybody? Amen. Miss Tina's shaking her head. Yes. When you blindfold me, I'm not opening my mouth. I'm not going to eat anything that you give me because 90% of the time, when, when somebody is trying to give me something and I'm blindfolded, it's mayonnaise and I'm not eating it. I'm not having it. And, and so this blind person here, this blind man, he had to have immediate faith. How many of you has got immediate faith today? To where it's instant. It's, you don't have to, well, God, show me one more sign or God, show me just a little bit more. Immediate faith. This is what I want to charge you today is to have immediate faith. He had immediate faith. He stood still and he, he sat there and his eyes were black and he couldn't see, but he could hear a voice. And I did the Bible don't say this, but at some point in time, I don't think Jesus just went up and uh, done the Benny Hinn thing on him and grabbed him and smacked him in the head. I believe Jesus was comforting him. I believe he was telling him who he was. He said, listen, I am the son of God. I am Jesus, the Messiah, and the works of my father are going to be made manifest. Why do you think that, Pastor? He told the disciples that that's what was going to happen. I believe he told it to the blind man as well. He said, the power of a living God is going to be made manifest in you today. Your life is going to be changed. You're going to go to this pool. You're going to see, but you've got to trust me for a moment. How many of you have ever been at a point where God says, trust me? God says, just trust me. Just do an unction. How many of you know what an unction is? Sherry, you know what an unction is? You think so? Sometimes you just get that unction to follow the Lord and do what he says. But this, this man, he had immediate faith. He stood there and Jesus began to pack the mud in his eyes, the spittle, the clay. He began to pack it in his eyes. And Jesus simply just whispered to him or spoke to him in a loud voice. I don't know what it was, but the guy knew. He said, now go wash. Don't let it sit for three days. Don't, don't do this. Don't, just go wash it off. The work's done been done. I want you to know something. The only reason Jesus took the spittle, he took the clay and made the spittle, the only reason he done that is so there'd be action in it. And they wouldn't say that it was uh, some miraculous thing that uh, this guy was faking or whatever. He just wanted them to see that he could take nothing and do something with it. I believe with all it's in me that is today, he could have spoke to him and said, you can see, and he'd been able to see. Amen. And so he, he went and he washed and he came seeing. If you would, the next one, John, and I want you to see the difference here. This is where we are in this point, what we see and what Jesus seen. This is where we are when we look at things that the blind man, what is the blind man in your life? Is the blind man that uh, security blanket that, that you've always had there and you don't know if you want to use it at this point in time? Is the blind man that, that uh, opportunity you have and you, you just don't know if you want to step into that opportunity at this point in time? Is the blind man an opportunity that's being offered to you <clears throat> and you don't know whether to take it or not? But this is what we see and what Jesus sees. When they walk by, they seen someone that must have sinned. They seen somebody that was dirty. They seen somebody that was standing, a beggar, begging by the gate or whatever he may have been sitting by. He was begging because he was blind. Well, somebody's done something wrong. I want you to know something today, church. It don't matter if the lowliest of low comes in this church. We're all equal today. We're all equal. And, and, and I've, in seven years, I've never seen you treat anyone any different then you have the most respected of the church. But they, they seen someone, someone sinned. Jesus seen, I get to do my father's work. I get to work miracles. I get to take that one that, that can't, and I get to make them where they can. Then we seen, well, he has nothing to work with. You know, there, there's not much hope for that person. 
There's not much hope for that situation. That there's nothing there to work with. We've tried and we've tried and, and I've tried and I can't do no more. There's no hope. There's no tools to work with. And Jesus said, I just need a little bit of spittle. He said, I just need a little dirt. Ain't it amazing that you can take something that's dirty and no good and put a little bit more dirt on it and it becomes perfect? One of my favorite pictures from my childhood, and, and y'all, somebody's going to call my mom and ask for this, but I wished I could go back to that time. I'm in a diaper, a yellow shirt, and I'm sitting in the middle of a mud hole, and I've got a water hose about that long, and I'm just having a good time. And I'm going to tell you, I was probably drinking the water out of that mud hole because the mud was all around my face. But that little bit of dirt made me happy. What does that mean? Maybe we need to get a little dirt on us to be completely happy. Maybe we need to get down, starting with our knees, and pray and ask God, is the spittle from my knees? Is the spittle that's dirt, is it from my hands? Or, or maybe we're in a bad way and we need the spittle applied to our eyes so we can truly see what it is God wants us to do. His works can be made manifest. Then it goes on and says, okay, what now? The dirt's been applied, what now? And he says, go wash. Go wash. What does that go wash mean? What, is, what does the Bible tell us? Is Jesus is a well springing up inside of us. Brother, I want to tell you something. I, I, I take two to three showers a day sometimes. But I've never been as clean as I have been when I get close to the Holy Spirit and I get to wash in that well that springs up. Some of you, uh, you, you know, you say, well, I, I get that around revival time and I get that around church count time. And I, boy, I love that feeling. I, I just love, I want to tell you something. It should be a daily occurrence that you get to go wash in the spirit of the Lord. That you get to go stand by the fountain and let it just spray up all over you and feel that presence. If you've not been to wash in the spirit of the Lord, I want to tell you today, go wash. Get close to him and see just like that man seen for the first time that day. He went down and he began to wash. And I believe he might have begun to see a little ripple in the water. And he might have begun to feel a little bit of grit in his eyes. And, and he might have begun to maybe see his own reflection. And then they, they come back just for a minute and try to finish up the scripture. They come back and they say, well, is this the man that sit by the gate and begged? Or sit and beg daily? They didn't say gate, but they said sit and beg daily. Well, it looks like him. If you want to change your appearance, get with Jesus. Amen. If you want to change how you look to the world, get with Jesus. Go wash. Go wash. Next one, if you would, and we're going to finish up. I want you to think about this for a little bit. As he got down to the bottom there, and he began to tell them in the 11th verse, I'm going to read the 11th and the 12th to you one more time. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay. See, that backs up my thoughts of what I had about Jesus whispering to him, saying, I'm Jesus, the son of God, and I'm fixing to help you. I'm going to make some clay and I'm going to put on your eyes and you're going to wash and you're going to see. He said, a man named Jesus made some clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Do you think he just received physical sight that day? Or do you think he received spiritual sight as well? I think he received a spiritual sight that was greater than his physical sight. I, I think he received something, and you say, why? Because if that had not been the case, he had been yelling, I can see, I can see. He had forgot about what happened. He had forgot about how he got there, but now he could see the greens and the blues and the yellows and the reds. He could see his mother and father for the first time, but he, that ain't what he done. He stopped and he said, a man named Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and now I can see. In other words, a miracle has happened in me. Are you able to say today, a miracle has happened in you? Can you 
say I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. It's been applied. Think about this for a minute, if you will. That blood is the spittle. Your heart is the eyes. It's been applied, and now you can see because you have a vision. Where should the vision come from today? I want to tell you something, Harmony Church. If you'll have this today, we'll never see anything with our spiritual eyes like what we will see if we travel with the vision of our heart today. That's what God wants us to be visioning with is our heart. He made a difference in this young man. Not because he gave him vision, but because he changed him on the inside as well. Then said they unto him, where is he? And he said, I know not. Where is he? What does that mean? Where's, what does that give us? If you'll change, everybody will want the change too. If we'll lead with our heart, if we'll lead with that vision that God has placed inside of us, he'll change too. They'll be asking, where's, where's this at? Where's this power? Where's, what are you doing? We're different. What, what, what are they doing that we're not doing? What, what's happening? We're following Jesus. I believe he had to trust him. I believe he had to let him get in front of him, and he had to trust him today. We've got to let God get in front of us. We've got to let Jesus come in front of us. And I know that's going to be a humbling experience for some of you, but we've got to let him get in front and stop us from that momentum that we think we've built up for so long. Church, I want to tell you something. In the January and February, you would have never told me that this church would look like this in that of the end of May. We were fixing to celebrate 150 years and everybody was excited. In the church, there was new people coming in each Sunday. It was just getting amazing. But you know what? God said, hold on just a minute. Somebody asked me, said, what's God trying to do through this pandemic? I want to tell you what God's trying to do through this pandemic. God's going to do whatever we allow him to do today. That's the answer to that million dollar question. What's God trying to do? Whatever we'll allow him to do with it. He's searching the hearts and he's searching the minds and he's aligning the visions today. That's what he's doing and people's going to be asking, where is he? Where's that man that changed that? Where's, where's it at? Give us direction. Harmony, you're going to be a beacon for so many. You're going to be a lighthouse for so many. Wayward ships, you're going to be that soul-saving station you've heard about for such a long time. Why is it? Uh, because through this whole thing, there's always been a vision. And it's not been about harmony it needs to be lifted up. It's that the word of God must go out. Amen. Simply it. Brother, and I love music as next as the as much as the next man. I love music, and Josh, you might as well get ready to sing another one, because Brother Terry has begged for chain breaker every every week. I hear it. I love music, but when it comes down to it, the most important part of church is that the word of God goes out, and sometimes that word of God is through the music. I'll tell you that. Sometimes I've got to set aside and let God work through that music. But church, the whole time, the most important thing has been that our vision be aligned. What is our vision? That we reach a lost and a dying world. Seven years ago when I stepped into this church, I had that vision. I want to reach as many as we can reach and go as far as we can go. Still have that today. What is your vision today? Can you see? Will you let him lead you? Will you follow? Can we humbly follow? I don't want to be a chief. I want to be an Indian. I want to follow. I want, I want somebody else to take the blame when it all goes wrong. How many of you is that way? But guess what? If I'm wrong following Jesus, then count me wrong today because that's who I'm going to follow. That's where I'm going to go. Church, I love you today. If we could, let's stand to our feet. Even when it's dark and you're blinded by the things of this world, John, you cleared it on me. I was trying to read that last one. She's got it. I want to read this to you. Even when it's dark and you're blinded by the things of this world, Jesus knows what's best for you. Stop and let him in front of you and allow him to give you vision. 
Stop and allow him in front of you. I don't care how big of a man you are, how, how great of a, a woman you are. You may fit Proverbs 31 to a T, and your family respects you and looks up to you, and you're just a virtuous woman. And you may be, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord kind of guy. But I want to ask you today, can we humbly say, God, what do you want me to do? So many times we think, he saved me, he put me on this path, but we forget to go back to that, that same place and say, God, what do you want me to do today? One of the writers said, I die daily. What does that mean? I got to surrender myself daily to the Lord. It wasn't just a one-time thing, October 17th of 99, to say, Lord, I give my life to you and then me to do what I wanted to with it. I go daily and I give my life to him and say, God, what do you want me to do today? I love you. I thank you for being here. Miss Tina, we'll... The words. They're going to sing the chorus with me. Yep. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom or saving He's a prison shaking savior if you got chains. He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know that just ain't right. There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom Or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains He's a chain breaker believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify yeah. if you believe it if you receive it you can feel it, somebody testify, if you got pain, he's a pain taker, oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior, if you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. I got anything anyway. Thank you, Josh, for that. Anybody? while since we've seen some of you, you're awful quiet. No, we look. Amen. Anybody else? No, we love you. We're praying for you. Keep reaching out to everybody. Let them know we're here. Um, according to what we're hearing, you know, we may be in phase three of this a lot quicker. 
they are letting schools start back summer stuff June the 8th. So uh, a lot of the restrictions are going away. I don't know how much longer we'll have to do the social distancing or whatever. But um, let people know. Uh, I don't want anybody to think there's not room because we have some pews marked off. We'll find a way to make room. Um, encourage them. We have a full family life center. I know we're putting a lot of work into getting video in here, but if we get more people than can sit in here, we'll go sit out there. And uh, we'll do whatever we have to do to let people be able to worship and serve with us. Pray for our deacons as they go through this time, their wives and everything that they have to make decisions on. Uh, I know they would love to have your input on everything and they try their best to get the emails out, but they are having to make some decisions um, based on everything that's going on just because we don't have conference right now. So uh, be much in prayer for two, three events coming up that this may affect. Vacation Bible School being the first, Revival being the next, and church camp being the next. Be much in prayer for those three things um, because all those fall in these guidelines of when they're saying this may still be an issue. So uh, please pray for them as we make preparation and decision on those things. All hearts and minds clear. Jeremiah, you dismiss us in a word of prayer. Show uncertainty. 